Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. I love when I get to explore a topic that I'm burning to know more about. And so today I have one of my favorite people, Jackie Bryan. You know her as our Beating Cancer Daily functional medicine expert, RN, certified health coach, certified new nutrition specialist, whole health educator, and just such a great friend of the Comedy Cures Foundation. So Jackie, welcome. And I can't wait to talk about plant-based eating. Yes, I am so excited to talk about this topic. And I just want to say, I love being a friend of ComedyCures.org. And the reason (laughs) is, no, it's seriously like laughter was so important to me when I was going through treatment 20 years ago. I mean, it it, it was, it it was, you know, everything was so dark and gloomy and everybody would come to you and be like, how are you? Remember that statement? (laughs) Like 10 years later, people still looked at me and said, how are you? (laughs) (laughs) Can you believe that between us were 45 years of survivorship? It just hit me when you said you're 20 years. Well, no, I'm 31 years from the time I was misdiagnosed. So we're 51 years together of survivorship. And we're only 29 years old, which is like, (laughs) I don't don't even know how that happens. It's just so amazing. (laughs) Well, I'm so glad that you said that about humor because I probably have every bad vegan joke ever written to tell you today. (laughs) But I'm going to start with the most corny Just because why not? You gave me that opening. And honestly, the Comedy Cures Foundation works with hundreds of comedians. So we have really funny humor, but sometimes the dumbest ones just tickle me. So why did the tofu cross the road? I don't know. Why did the tofu cross the road? To prove it wasn't chicken. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) that is, that is cute. That is very funny. (laughs) I'm going to keep them coming all, all this episode, Jackie, (laughs) because I, I just can't believe the endless (laughs) amounts of bad jokes there are about plant-based eating. So it is, it's out, it's out there. I love, you know, I love this concept of plant-based eating, but I want to ask you when I say plant-based eating, what do you think about? Chomping on grass. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, when I was diagnosed, so I was diagnosed now 25 years ago, right? I was diagnosed six years. So when I was diagnosed, the next day, I went fully macrobiotic. Okay. So yeah. I went hardcore macrobiotic. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even really know what that meant, but I got every right. book and I just did it. Right, and right. then my cancer just kept soaring. Yeah. And I was like, well, if it's not having an impact, <laughs> I might as well just like modify this and not be as extreme as right. as I was. So um, I, I, I love plant-based eating. I actually have a very um, plant-based and fish-centric diet now, mm-hmm. more modified. It doesn't mean I never eat meat um, mm-hmm. or fowl, but I just, I love vegetables. I love fruits and I, it's easy for me. I really enjoy it, but I, I want to learn more because I think I could do it better. Yeah. I mean, I think we can all do it better. I, I, I wanted to talk about this today with you because I think when we say plant-based, it can be intimidating to some people. I think they start thinking, oh boy, if I go plant-based, that means I can't have, and they go through their long list of things that they can't have. And it- I think people just think, <laughs> I'm going to be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to be hungry or deprived. And, you know, let's face it, we don't like being deprived. You know, no. we're just, we're, we're, we're not a society, you know, we, we have instant gratification. We get food whenever we want it. And it's, 
you know, it's it's a problem, right? I mean, we've got lots of highly ultra processed foods that are creating lots of inflammation in our body. And you know what? That's another podcast we need to <laughs> we need to do for sure. The difference between minimally processed process and ultra processed foods and what it means to our body. So we'll put that on the back burner for Yay, Jackie's another. <laughs> coming back. Yay. <laughs> for yay. another for another time. Because I find it to be I find it to be really interesting, uh, the topic. But what does it mean to go plant based? It's not chomping on grass. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, but I think people associate vegans with being pasty and hungry. So we right. have to bust that image. <laughs> Those poor vegans, right? You know. <laughs> so first of all, when I say plant-based, I don't mean you have to go without any animal protein. There's just maybe a way that we can do it that puts it more as a condiment than it does the main centric or central thing on your plate. Right? Oh, I get it. So you're saying yeah. let's be plant forward. Yes. I mean, if you think back, if you think back on the podcasts we've done in the past, we've we've done podcasts on antioxidants, we've done podcasts on nuts and seeds, we've done podcasts on heart health. You know, we've done podcasts on things that reduce inflammation. Yeah, Jackie, and- but your two most favorite podcasts <laughs> in all of beating cancer daily. If you look at how many people listen, <laughs> the two <laughs> most listened to are poop. <laughs> and vagina health. I'm just- yeah, and plants <laughs> and plants help with all those things, right? I mean, like, you know, if you want your if you want your gut to perform better, you know, there's certain prebiotics that are in plants that are are so beneficial to the gut. I mean, if we think about all the benefits to our body when it comes to plants, it's they're they're just such a powerful nutrient source for for overall health and well being. <laughs> okay, time for a dumb joke. Ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the vegans argue? I don't know. Why did they argue? Because they had bad tempest. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that is so cute. That is so cute. <laughs> we can explain what tempeh is. <laughs> tempeh, is soy. Well, let me ask you a question. If I asked you, what does a plant based plate look like or diet look like, what would you say to me? Like, what do you think? I would say based on other episodes that I have done with you, (laughs) that it should be the rainbow, all different colors of the rainbow that we should be eating that. So my plate should have lots of vegetables on it with all different colors of the rainbow. I want to have this conversation also about soy because that's why I brought up that joke. Because Mm -hmm. when I was diagnosed so many decades ago, soy was a Mm no-no. And now it looks like soy's back in favor. But Mm -hmm. there was this big thing. You had breast cancer. You did not eat soy. And now it seems like it's back back in the plant-based fold again. So I did want to talk to you about that. Yeah, I think it really depends on one, your medical team, what their belief system is. And I highly encourage people to listen to their own medical team and also listen to your internal, you know, feelings on it. I actually still don't eat soy. And uh, and it's not because it's a phytoestrogen and a phytoestrogen is a food that acts like an estrogen in your body. And if you've had an estrogen fed cancer like I did and and Sarah, and I believe yours no, was I not was estrogen. ER and yeah, yours yeah, was, I was triple negative. Yeah, yours was not estrogen positive, but mine was. And so I avoided it uh, at first because of that. But actually, it doesn't agree with me. It's not great for my stomach. Uh, so that's that's the main reason that I don't include it in my diet now. There There is some research that's come out that said that you'd have to eat a lot of soy in order for it to really have an impact on your estrogen levels in your body. Uh, but it wasn't something that I chose to to bring into my diet. But again, I I think it's important for you to check with your medical team to see if that's something that's a good fit for you. You know, the the soy does have some health benefits, as do many of the other plants. And when I just asked you about, you know, what does a plant based diet look like, or what does your plant based plate look like? It's got lots of colors in it, and each one of those colors are kind of a medicinal benefit to your body, right? So the red will offer lycopene, the orange will offer carotene, beta carotene, and so on and so on. I mean, we have lots of health benefits with different colors. But when we take and break it down to systems, like what what actually is going to be the benefit, those 
phytochemicals are those kind of naturally occurring compounds in plants and they help our immune system. They help us stay strong by supporting those body systems. You know, our brain health, you know, we have, we have many plant foods that are beneficial for our brain health, things like avocados and beets, chocolate. Yeah. Dark chocolate. <laughs> the right, the right kind of chocolate, the right kind of chocolate. Not, we have an not episode the that, <laughs> on that. We do. I know, I know. That you is know, a very like, exciting episode for yeah. me because I love dark chocolate, but watch the sugar content and watch all the yeah. additives. Yes, and that's the big thing, right? So we know that we know that these plant-based foods can be beneficial to the brain and and um even gut health, right? Cuz it, it has those prebiotics in it. It's got the fiber. Fiber is kind of the the backbone of the plants and eating a high fiber diet can reduce the risk of heart disease. It can help manage cholesterol in addition to kind of aiding your your gut response. I I've a fiber to me is is such an amazing thing to have in our diet because it, in a world full of toxins, you know, our plastics and parabens and phthalates and pesticides and all the things that we get exposed to every day, which are super scary. Fiber is the thing that binds to all that crap <laughs> that ends up in our digestive system and it escorts it out of our body. It's like, hello, I'm going to come in and clean it up and just bring it out and and it's not going to get reabsorbed into your body. And it does the same with cholesterol, which is one of the reasons people talk about higher fiber diets when it comes to cholesterol. So plants are a big player in that for sure. But how do you do it so that it's cost effective, time saving and tasty? I mean there's these are the challenges that I hear that you know there's so many food deserts and trying to get organic um vegetables is hard and expensive and then mm -hmm. how do you actually prepare them and know that you're getting the right balance. I think these are all the challenges. You know, we don't yeah, have I mean, you, cooking class anymore right. in school. Yeah. Well, you asked like three different questions in that statement, right? Which is which is just like you to be difficult. Well, I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna say I told you I wanna I wanna learn from this episode. <laughs> So I I want to do this. And these are the burning questions that have been yeah. sitting in my mind along with these dumb jokes. I should have scripted you with these questions there because <laughs> <laughs> you're just being difficult. No, it, you're the first thing you said was how do I get these in my diet? And the second thing you said was how do we how do we uh choose organic? And then I think the third thing was how do we prepare them? Right. And so those are incredibly awesome questions. So I'm fully prepared to answer them. But <laughs> but the first was how do we get them in our diet? Right. So change is hard. And we did do that podcast on habits. Right? <laughs> I was gonna say so, I was so, gonna say that. <laughs> so we did do the podcast on habits. So I think that's a really good place to start if people are looking to change their behavior. You know, no one is waking up in the morning and saying, woohoo, I'm going to make a big change today, right? We don't feel overly motivated to make enormous changes in our life because it's difficult, it's scary, it makes us feel vulnerable. There's a whole host of reasons why change is so difficult. But um, bringing vegetables and fruits into your diet are going to be so beneficial for all of the systems we talked about, your brain, your gut, your heart health. And so we have to start somewhere. And so you can go to the store and you can kind of see what looks good. I love going to the store and looking for different bright colors. And remember, you know, you said earlier, eat the rainbow. If you go to the store and you start picking out, oh, this is something red. This is something green. This is something yellow and orange and purple and white. And so you bring in those different colors and then you're starting to eat the rainbow. It's the requirement is not that you're perfect right? Because there's no expectation for that. Wait but, a minute. But... <laughs> I grew up thinking you could be perfect. I did not think you're telling me now nobody has to be perfect. Okay. Well, you're, you're close to perfect, Sarah. No, the no, rest no. of us, you know, the rest of us humble, humble <laughs> humans are not, but you know, I do my best to get in the colors each day because that's really important to me, especially as a cancer survivor. And also somebody, I have a family history of heart issues, you know, not myself, but in my immediate family. So I recognize that consuming plant foods are going to, you know, keep me healthier, keep my cholesterol all in check and you know it's low in saturated fats. I mean those are those are all really important. So uh, wait we'll a second. I can see your face and they can't. <laughs> and I am telling you her skin is so 
beautiful. And that's Aww. what really got me upping my fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Was I look at Jackie every week and I'm like, her skin is so pretty. I bet it's from all those fruits and vegetables. <laughs> I'm going to start pounding fruits and vegetables so I have skin like Jackie. So just out of vanity, if you <laughs> want to have great skin, you need to start eating the way Jackie's telling us. Oh, you are so kind. Thank you so much. And here I here I sit unshowered. <laughs> <laughs> They never but, know but that you we're know, in our I'm pajamas. Gonna, I am so going to take the compliment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The second thing you said, and I'm going to get actually give some tips for the plant-based diet in just a little bit, but the second thing you said in your statement was organic, right? I love that question because, you know, you're, the, you know, you, you're you probably thinking, oh, I'm going to eat more plant-based diet. And, oh, and now Jackie's telling me everything has to be organic. Well, everything doesn't really have to be organic, right? So we're going to take baby steps towards making these behavior change. So first thing is just to bring in more plants and and into your life. Those fruits, those vegetables, really important, focusing on the color. I love the idea of the color because it's such a positive thing when you go in the store and you're sort of shopping that perimeter of the store and you're looking for those bright colors. The organic thing is a important thing for, especially for the dirty dozen. And so the resource that I would give you, Saren, is the Environmental Working Group. They have their dirty dozen list that they update every year and they'll tell you what's on it. The, the dirty dozen would be the top 12 fruits and vegetables that you need to purchase organic, right? So everything else is fine. Just go for the top 12. The top 12 are going to be the, the ones that are going to be most beneficial um, and and going to be the ones that you probably should purchase organic. Everything else non-organic for the most part is is okay. Uh, it might be better if you went organic, but going full organic is really expensive. And so I think if we just start off with those top 12. Can you just we, name a few of the dirty dozen just off the top? Abs of absolutely. Uh, you know, apples and spinach, some berries, but not all berries. So the Environmental Working Group gives you a excellent opportunity to learn about the best fruits and vegetables to purchase that are organic. So I highly recommend that you look at this, Saren. The Dirty Dozen for 2023, this was the list. And again, it's updated every year. Um, but for 2023, I don't have 2024 just yet, but for 2023, uh, the list of foods that are highest in pesticides that would be best to go towards organic would be strawberries, spinach, kale, collard greens, and mustard greens, peaches, pears, nectarines, apples, grapes, bell and hot peppers, cherries, blueberries, and green beans. That is your dirty dozen list uh, for the year that I think if you choose those organic, you'll be in good shape to reduce the amount of pesticides in your diet. So interesting because I'm always seduced by those farm stands on the side of the road. And I, yeah. I always think, oh, okay, they're not organic, but they're more farm to table. Maybe those are better than just that getting. That's such a good point. So yes, I love going to farmer's markets and, and it gives you the chance to have a conversation with the farmer. And that's like super fun. So that's my that's my jam. Like I love <laughs> doing that. I even bought a new bicycle, right? So and it has a basket on the front, and it's got a basket on the back. You are like the I, wicked witch. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is so cool. It has a light. Oh my gosh, my husband's like I look like a little bit of a freak show, but I ride my bike to the farmer's market and then I pick up the the fruits and vegetables that look the best to me. But I do have these amazing conversations with the farmers and it's so much fun because their life is not always easy and you you get to learn a lot about what it means to be able to bring the food to market. And I think I would much rather purchase it from a local person than I would a big organization. And so you know, supporting those local farmers is so important. And yes, you can. So while I just gave you the the dirty dozen list from the Environmental Working Group, having a conversation with the farmer, that's the best way to go. I love that you said that because if they say I'm only using this pesticide or because there are certain uh, pesticides that are approved for organic farming, a certain percentage, right? So when you 
purchase something that's organic, it doesn't mean it's completely pesticide free. It's just a certain percentage of it. And so you can ask the farmer about it. And sometimes they don't have the organic label because it's expensive for them to get an organic label stamped on their product. They just don't have the resources to be able to afford something like that. So I love having a conversation with the farmer and you can learn a lot. I mean, you remember you are what you eat, you know, what you're, you know, where the food is coming from. So important. And I'm a big bar of chocolate. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You're a big bar of chocolate, right? So, so I wanted to just share with you, Sarah, just a few things that we need to think about if we go really heavy plant-based. So when I talk plant-based, I want people to think about how do we bring in more plants into our diet without getting a deficiency in our our other nutrients that are necessary for our body. And so a lot of times when I'm sharing information with my clients or even sharing information with you, the first question might be like, okay, so if I'm not going to eat a lot of animal protein, how do I get my protein? Right? So, so because protein, everything in your body functions on protein, off of protein. So we definitely have to have good sources of protein. So it is possible to meet your daily protein needs through a plant-based diet. And again, when I'm saying plant-based, you might have a little bit of animal protein all the way to none, right? So really up to you. But the so- some of the sources of plant-based proteins would be things like beans and lentils, legumes, that soy. Um, I'm kind of stop laughing about your little jokes there. And then <laughs> I and have even, more. I have more. And nuts and seeds and whole grains, right? So so those are all important when it comes to plant-based protein sources, right? And we do need to pay attention to those because you need to have all the amino acids in protein in order for your body to get the benefits from it. So interesting because I think the all or nothing concept is ingrained in all of us. You know, we're such a society of extremes, but just this idea to start easing into it and then finding out what works for you is probably the really great way to do this. Yes. I mean, I am heavily plant-based, but I still eat animal protein, but it's organic, grass-fed or wild-caught, depending upon what I'm eating. But, you know, another thing that we need to think about when we're balancing nutrients, especially with plant-based, is vitamin B12. B12 is a a water-soluble vitamin. And oftentimes people that are vegetarian, full vegetarian, don't consume any animal meat or egg products, are uh, deficient in B12, and they either need to get shots or take a supplement. But B12 is not needed you know, in huge amounts in the body, but it's really critical to so many of our body processes. It, it's, it's naturally found in in just the right amounts in animal products. So, you know, if you're not going to be eating animal products, you can get them in fortified cereals, healthy, no sugar added cereals, even nutritional yeast, which I I enjoy nutritional yeast on cauliflower and potatoes, um, not brewer's yeast. We're not bacon bread, right? <laughs> it's nutritional yeast because nutritional yeast is actually a complete protein and it does have B12 in it. And uh, plant-based milks and yogurts are also a good source of B12. But again, really important for us to have that in our body and in our diet as well. I was actually anemic when I was on a much heavier meat-based diet. Mm -hmm. And now that I've shifted to a plant-based diet, I'm not having problems with anemia. But I'm really careful to, you know, make sure that I'm getting a very balanced diet diet every day. And also I'm using a lot of the seeds, flax Mm -hmm. seeds and chia seeds and hemp and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, I, I eat meat once in a while just to like keep my body digesting it, knowing how Mm -hmm. to do it. Right. Yeah. I had a lot more problems with anemia before I switched. But that's interesting because normally on a, on a meat-based diet, uh, the iron that's in the meat is going to prevent anemia in in many people. But well, I was just some... having overall absorption issues. Yes, so yeah, and that can be that related to from. related to the gut. But it sounds like your body has found a nutritional routine or diet that it likes better. And that's you know I I love sharing with you just kind of this whole concept of 
you're you are what you eat, but you are or more often you are what you can absorb. And clearly you were not able to absorb the the iron that was in the meat sources, but your body likes the iron that is actually in the the plant-based foods. And so when we think about iron, you know, that's an essential element of our blood production. You know, acid acid like lemon juice can actually help with iron absorption. So optimal health benefits of iron foods are are really important for us. And so the meats didn't work for you, but maybe sources like spinach and leafy greens and uh, beans, black eyed peas, lentils, chickpeas, and even oatmeal might be your- You are making your, me hungry. <laughs> I love might everything. Be your, it might be your jam, right? So <laughs> so I get it. I, I think that we need to make sure that we're choosing the the nutrition routine that's going to be best for us. I the other piece when we go heavy plant-based, we want to pay attention to vitamin D. And vitamin D is really that sunshine vitamin, right? And so I live in the Northeast. So, you know, we're not out in our bathing suits between November and March. <laughs> It's cold. So unless vitamin... you're in the polar bear club. <laughs> I know, not me, not me. <laughs> but vitamin D is really important in absorbing calcium, right? So calcium is what one of the really important minerals when it comes to supporting our bone health. And it's also good for our immune system and controlling inflammation. And so making sure that if we're if we're going full on plant-based, you know, we want to get fortified foods, even plant-based milk, um, and even more sunlight, right? Just depending upon, you know, always want to be safe with sunblock and things like that when, you know, when we're out in the sun for a prolonged period of time. But that's another podcast, right? For yeah, sure. but you taught us something on a different podcast, which was if you're going to have spinach, spray, sprinkle some lemon on it. Mm-hmm. And that makes it easier to absorb and more efficient and yummy too. So yeah. these little tricks that you're just putting in every episode, <laughs> I'm trying to remember well, them all. Well, I think, and you did, that was a really good point to remember. But when you think about it, our, our body works in synergy, right? It's not just one thing. It works in harmony. And so it's one of the reasons that supplements don't always work because they, the companies take and isolate a nutrient and then they say, oh, here, take this. That means you're going to get this nutrient in your body. Unfortunately, when we isolate it and it goes into the body, it doesn't behave the same way as it would as if it was you know, in a certain type of food, right? So we want to make sure that we're getting supplementation or even foods that are bioavailable that our body is going to know what to do with. So if you use calcium as an example, you know, we 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 all kind of know that calcium is really important for our bone structure. It helps um, with the formation of bone. It helps with cell signaling, blood clotting, muscle contraction. And it's not just found in dairy. So people that are plant centric right they're really focusing in on the plants they don't have to be just having cow's milk or having any cow's milk i haven't had cow's milk in 18 years probably me um, either yeah so interesting yeah no but what I, are the foods what are the foods rich in calcium sarin do you know i would say plant based foods what would oh. be the ones that you would think about well i would say beans yeah. Leafy I mean, greens. You, yeah, leafy greens. You got it. So collard greens, kale, broccoli, tofu. <laughs> now I can't talk about soy without laughing because of your jokes. Chickpeas. Uh, ta- <laughs> chickpeas, tahini, mm-hmm. and almonds, right? Those are really good sources of calcium. So this is about you and I being informed consumers, right? So what is it that our body needs? And then finding a way to, you know, bring these into our diet in a meaningful way. And so I think, Saren, if you were to say, and I know you already eat a a clean diet, but if I were to use you as an example, like, so Saren, maybe you had a highly processed diet, which I know you don't, but I'm just going to give you as an example and say you ate a lot of meat proteins, like what would be the next steps? Like what would be strategies for you to be successful in making your plate look more plant-based? What would you say? I would just start reducing the portion size of the meat base protein. And I would just start increasing the other elements on my plate so that I just had the visual of having a full plate, but also had the joy of starting to explore all these other foods. I just think that 
looking at a lonely, empty plate is really <laughs> disturbing. So I and would it, have to fill it up. Yes. Yeah. I'm a visual. So we have visual satisfaction and then we have physical satisfaction. And I'm a big That's another visual. episode. <laughs> you know what? That's a really good topic. Portion sizes and visual because I love that topic because we are so able to change our perceptions of things by changing the visual cues that we give our body. So I actually eat off of small plates, but I fill the small plate up so it looks really full and it makes me feel like I'm eating a lot more food. And this is, you know... I know this isn't our topic for today, but if you look like 50 years ago, our average plate size was about nine inches. And now the average plate size is 12 inches, which means we have a heck of a lot more surface area to put stuff on, which means, you know, we've got an obesity problem in this country. I have a crunch problem. So if <laughs> I don't crunch a certain amount a day, I don't feel satiated and mm -hmm. I can't fall asleep. So right. I have to have crunch. So fresh carrots, fresh green beans, they help me feel like I've had enough to eat. Yeah. And we all have different sensations. I almost had a joke to say, but it's not a clean joke when you were saying that. <laughs> so, so I just, I bit my tongue on that one. Okay. I didn't say that. <laughs> You'll tell me after. You have, You'll tell clearly, me. clearly you have an oral fixation for crunchy things. And then I'm just going to stop there. Right. But it's important for us to know some of us are sweet and salty. Some of us are crunchy. Some of us are creamy. Again, this just sounds naughty, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> but but it's important to know what is important, you know, what is work works for you. And you know that you're a crunchy, crunchy kind of gal. Um, and that's important. So you can bring in those fruits, those vegetables that are more crunchy. So you're more probably a raw fruit and vegetable person than you would be cooked, where it gets kind of mushy and maybe loses some of its nutrient value. One one thing I would suggest, especially for those animal protein, you know thoughts that you might be having if you want to have more chicken and fish, um, is that instead of building your meal around that meat or that chicken, try going just heavier on the plants. Make sure that the portion size of the animal protein takes up like quarter of the plate and that half of your plate is going to be plants. I just love that visual. Half of that plate is plants. And uh, again, that's going to help with a natural portion, portion control. It's going to reduce some calories. It's going to give you the fiber. All the benefits that we talked about for all those systems, your your brain, your gut, your heart, all of those things. I think. But how do grains feed into this? I mean, like <laughs> what part of our plate and what kind of grains do we? Well, grains, grains are a kind of another topic that we get on. We're kind of focused on the plants right now. However, uh, you know, grains can fall into this category a little bit as well with our legumes and things like that. But but I'm thinking right now more the leafy greens and the fruits and the vegetables, but usually it would be a half of your plate would be fruits and vegetables. A quarter of your plate would be a healthy grain, like a, a brown rice, a quinoa, uh, something along that line. Um, and then another quarter would be a uh, protein, a lean protein source. If you decided to go, you know, just full on plant based, and I really encourage people to try a meatless Monday, you know, try to have a whole day that is just plant based. And then you could find your plant based sources of proteins and your nuts and your seeds and your beans and, and all of those. Those can be really helpful. But, you know, and then be really the... hungry on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all of the strategies, all of the strategies we're talking about require preparation, right? So you, you really need to stock your kitchen zones with plant foods. If you don't have it, you're not going to eat it, right? So you want to keep it stocked. It, they can be frozen, right? So there's lots of good uh, foods that are frozen. I just made the other night this delicious uh, pan fry, uh, pan stir fried chicken and I put it on top of, it was frozen. It was frozen sweet potatoes, Yukon potatoes and um, carrots. And it was, they were strips that were almost like a hash brown. And oh my gosh, it was delicious. It was absolutely, it was the first day. And I bought it because I just didn't feel like slicing them all up. And it was so easy. It was organic. I think it, I think it was Cascadian Farms made it, but it was absolutely delicious. But when you start 
veganizing your favorite dishes, right? If you start just bringing in swaps to make it more plant heavy, you're going to you're going to see not only the health benefits, but you're going to change the nutritional quality of the foods that you're eating and even your mindset. Right. So that's going to be something that can be really helpful for the. Yeah, you did say change. there was chicken there. Yes. So yeah. There, I it had, wasn't just vegan, it was a mixture of both. So you really just exemplified what that could look like. Yeah. I mean, just a small, I, I enjoy animal protein, but my chicken is organic. Uh, if I do eat meat, which is kind of rare, I it's grass fed and it's organic. If I have salmon, it's wild caught. And I go in and and the fish market is a mile from my house. And I have really long conversation with my fish guy. <laughs> you probably have a joke for that too. But <laughs> but but I go in and I ask questions, you know, where is it from? And there is a wonderful resource for discovering the safest seafood in your area, Saren. And it's called the Monterey Bay Safe Catch um, or Seafood Watch. And if you if you Google that, Monterey Bay, it's it's fabulous. And you just type in your zip code and it will pop up with all the safe seafood in your particular area of the world or the country. And will so you it's repeat a- that again? Because I just think people might it's- be driving and trying to remember it. Yeah, it's Monterey Bay and it's Safe Seafood Guide. And it gives you, you you type in your zip code where you live and it gives you a little wallet size thing that you can print out and you can put it obviously in your wallet or just keep it on your phone and you go into the seafood and then you can interrogate your seafood man. <laughs> just don't tell them I sent you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it, it, it'll give you a guide for how the fish was caught, you know, how much mercury might be in it. It's actually, it's a really interesting guide and it's a great resource. But I think being prepared is kind of the name of the gay, game. Like you just want to make sure that you have the stuff in your house, that you plan the meals, grab some recipes. There's so many fabulous recipes that you can bring into your day that will make it delicious. It won't feel like you're going you know, heavy on the plant base, and you can just start with one meal at a time, right? Yeah, so if you I love feel... this meatless Mondays concept. It yeah. made it seem doable, and then I also love this idea of doing like a shop where you decide to stock up and have mm-hmm. different nuts and seeds in mm-hmm. your cabinet, so you're not starving and struggling, you know, and competing with the processed foods because you've already set that up. And then right. also at the beginning, the idea that you said go into the market or the grocery store and just like look at, take a minute to be present in the beauty of those displays. And then take it That's what like I, a meditation I, and yeah. pick out different colors and Try I get it. so excited. I get so excited, Saren. Like when I go in the store and I see the, co- I hold it up and I, it's kind of romantic, you know? That's because <laughs> you don't have four toddlers in your cart, like screaming and pulling at you. I walk, I walk around and we, we recently got a Whole Foods not too far from my home, about five miles. And so I go in there and you know, I walk around and I just kind of look at the organic produce and I, and I get ideas and, and, you know, in, in this day and age, it's so easy to grab your phone and say, find me a healthy recipe for, you know, arugula or find me a healthy recipe for, and then you can just get your shopping list and, and go and shop. I, I, I just think starting Saren with one meal a day makes it easier. And the, you know, the, the other secret that parents have known for years is even just starting to layer more plants and and veggies into your meals. Like how many times, you know, when, you know, I have three kids and all of them are older now, but, you know, I snuck the vegetables in. I had to hide them because they wouldn't, they wouldn't eat anything green unless I hid them. I hid them in smoothies. I hid them in, you know, their, their meals. I'd wrap, wrap it up inside a piece of chicken or, you know, something. But, but if you layer them in, you know, even wilting some of the greens or adding them into soups and sauces, you know, that those are all great ways to sneak those plants into your diet. Your smoothie episode is phenomenal. Like it transformed the way that I make a smoothie and they are so robust now, so filling, but just so, so healthy. So if you haven't heard Jackie's smoothie episode, you definitely have to hear it. 
Jackie, this is fabulous. I think you've motivated us all. Well, I think it, it's such an important topic, Saren. And, you know, regardless of whether, you know, we're dealing with cancer or any other inflammatory health issue, because that's my main focus is reducing inflammation in the body. And, you know, having cancer like you and I had, we we recognize that our body was pretty inflamed, right? To get that, to get that disease. And plants are a medicinal key to improving your overall health and well-being. And so I think it's it's it makes sense to bring it into our diet. It doesn't have to be torture. It's it can be kind of exciting. Are you excited? I am and I was just thinking about how I have tricked my being into accepting fruits as a dessert at the end of mm-hmm. a meal. We yes. were such a huge dessert family, like multiple desserts at the end of every meal. And now I always start with fruit so that I just kind of quiet that sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. And then if I need a little piece of chocolate after or a little bite of something, I have it. But I have really infiltrated (laughs) my diet with fruit, not only as a snack, but in place of heavy desserts. Mm -hmm. And, And I really lost some weight that was just coming on because of this habit, this culture in my family of having heavy desserts. So the other thing I find really creative is when I'm in a restaurant that's plant forward and the desserts are made with vegetables, Mm -hmm. I'm shocked like how they made something taste so great and so healthy. And I just remember my comedian's joke that you have dessert to get the taste of vegetables out of your mouth. So Uh (laughs) why why would you ever eat a vegetable for dessert? But now they are delicious. Yes. I mean, and these are habits. Like what you're talking about are changing habits. And, and, you know, my, my husband always jokes that like when I go to a restaurant, it's like that scene out of when Harry met Sally, you know, when she has the orgasm at the table. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not having the (laughs) orgasm at the table, but I am a creative orderer and to the point where we have a few of our favorite restaurants and I show up and they have, the chef knows what the Jackie salad is. And, and so the Jackie salad is, they make it for me, which is amazing. So we you know, I just show up and I have it. And I have friends now that go to the restaurant and say, can I have a Jackie salad? (laughs) So funny. I actually have gotten this down to a little bit of a routine because the worst thing is when you're at a table and someone goes, I'll have the steak, I'll have the fish. And then they get to me and it's like, I'm sorry, I'm gluten and dairy free. (laughs) And I don't like salt in my food. What can I eat? And then it takes like 10 minutes of interrogation with the waiter. (laughs) So now, right when I get in, I try to get there ahead of everyone. And Mm -hmm. then I pull the waiter aside first. And I say, could we just talk about the menu? Because I'm a little bit complicated in what my needs are. And I don't want to bore everyone at the table. So can you just point out to me what my choices are in advance? And then Mm -hmm. I'll figure it out while everybody else gets here and is looking at the menu. And because I could see people's eyes just gloss over, even my (laughs) husband, like, oh, no, here we go again with all her dietary needs. Yeah, I mean, I think it's we we all have to find the best solution for ourselves. And, and, you know, I'm kind of done apologizing to people when I ask for things prepared in a certain way. I go to restaurants that are willing to accommodate those needs. And if not, you know, for traveling or something, I'll have my own little lunchbox with with some of my favorite things in it. And, you know, the rest of the family might stop at a Chick-fil-A or something like that. But it, you know, I, I bring my own stuff or I usually eat at places that are, you know, pretty willing to accommodate some of those needs. And, you know, most restaurants and most people, I find them just to be so kind and good and willing to accommodate. And then I always make sure I tip, you know, if if people, if people are willing to go the extra mile for me and I let them know in advance, I'm like, I, this will be worth it for you. (laughs) Thank you so much, you know, and, and, uh, but, and I'm very thankful and grateful for people going the extra mile for me. Um, Cancer was a game changer for me. It changed my whole career path. It changed the way I received so many things in my life. I'm so thankful to be 20 years out and to be as healthy as I am. 
and and to you know to be able to share this type of information with you so that so that you can improve your health too right so it's so it's it's such a gift you know it's the it's the uh i think the beauty of helping others helps me heal <laughs> and that's why i'm going to give you bad vegan puns <laughs> 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 okay, ready? I have three of them. Okay. Okay. Everyone, Romaine calm. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Being there, done that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did not write these. These came from two different sites, Plant Based News and Nourish. So um, here's another one. Jackie, you always have to have the final soy. Oh, (laughs) that's a good way to end. (laughs) (laughs) I should, but I can't help it because I have vegan movie remakes. Oh, (laughs) two for you. Beauty and the Beat. Oh, cute. (laughs) And the last one is Lord of the Onion Rings. Oh, cute. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's always such a pleasure. I love doing these with you. If you want to learn more about Jackie Bryant, you can find her at her website. It is just such a beautiful, carefully made website. You can join her practice as a group member or a, a client if that interests you. Uh, if you can't find Jackie Bryan online, then just write to comedycures.org, go to our website, comedycures.org, hit the contact menu and write to us. We'll send you her signature or go to the podcast section and record a message to me and we will uh, get you in touch with Jackie. The other thing is if you have ideas that you're doing to make this transition to plant-based eating uh, really fun, share it with us. We love to share your ideas. And if you have an idea for a topic, we love to hear those too. So this is really an incredibly dynamic community, and we love hearing from you. Thank you so much for having me, Sarah, and this was wonderful. I love you, Matcha. <laughs> I almost ordered a matcha tea yesterday. So I love you. Oh my gosh, this was so fun. So have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. If you loved today's episode, then tell the world. Why? Because Beating Cancer Daily and our membership circle are both a listener and donor supported experience. So the more people you tell and the more people that join us, the more robust and interesting programs our nonprofit, the Comedy Cures Foundation, can bring to you throughout the year. I really want you to go to comedycures.org. And of course, I always want you to make a donation. It's tax deductible to the extent allowed by law. But what's super exciting is not only can you laugh and explore the comedy there, you can look at our membership levels and find the one that's great for you. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, gift one to a chemo brother or sister or to a caregiver that you just want to help them improve the quality of their day. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.